Hey, good morning from the office in Southeast Missouri. I'm gonna do a little bit different video today. I'm gonna do a video on how to survive in this market. And uh, it, it's really in any market, to be honest with you. Um, now, a lot of you guys follow me on YouTube. A lot of you may not. I'm actually making this to send out uh, to the people at CRST to try to help the new guys. Uh, I got five tips to help you guys survive and do well uh, here. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Matt Sturgill. I am an owner-operator. I've been leased on to CRST for a couple years now. I've been in the trucking industry for 35-plus uh, years. So uh, I am not in the lease purchase program. I'm an actual owner-operator. I'm a kid drop in a truck. My picture, my truck, go ahead. Okay, there. That should be in there by now. Um, the reason that's important is um, I can take my truck anywhere. I own it. I'm not beholden to any kind of program. I'm not beholden to CRST. I am not paid by them in any way to do videos. Um, I just do videos to help truck drivers. Um, so with that said, I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. I can't imagine there being a better place to work or a better place to put your truck and people to work with. Okay, so I just want to get that out of the way for those of you who may not know me, and uh, we'll get on with the video. Now, I got five tips to help you survive uh, this market, which, you know, the market's down, but it's still a great market. I'm probably the only YouTuber saying that uh, because the majority of them honestly just haven't been around a long time like I have. So rates are still far better than they used to be, even with the high fuel, uh, but there's things you can and can't do as an owner operator if you want to if you want to survive and make it and be profitable now this is not a fix it video so let me get this out of the way if you went out for the guys that may have clicked on this if you went out and bought uh new trucks uh within the last couple of years and you went out and spent uh two hundred thousand dollars on a truck and overpaid for it and, and maybe a trailer there's nothing i could do to help you this video is not going to help you um, the writing's on the wall. You're going to be out of business if rates continue like that. Excuse me. It's just a mathematical certainty. So I'm sorry. You'll have to learn from your mistake and come on back. So, uh, but for the lease purchase guys and the guys that didn't overpay for equipment, this will help you because everything's still very affordable. So enough with the introduction. I'm going to stop this, go get more coffee. And uh, of course, you won't notice that because my kid puts them all together. And we're going to get to five things that can make you, can help you be successful uh, uh, as an owner operator or lease purchase guy. We'll be back in a minute. Stay tuned. All right, we got our copy. We're ready to go. So before we get started, this is all, of course, geared towards the people here at CRST. If you're a spot market runner, these tips could help you, but th this video is not really designed for you guys. Um, any of you know me, I am against running the open market if you're a one-man band. It's just a bad idea, and uh, the rates right now prove that. We're, uh, we're holding far better over here than the open market. But that's another video for another day, so with no further delay, let's get going. Number one. I'm a kid dropping in something here. Your lane. You have to know what lanes to run and what not to run. I've done a video on lanes. You're welcome to go back where I show you where the good freight is uh, at this company. They will tell you an orientation, uh, orientation if, I, if I remember correctly, and I think they still do it, stay east of I-35. Yes, there's truth to that, but it's a lot more involved in that. Um, but go watch the lane video, but here's how you develop your lane. My lane, I'm in the money lane. I run the rust belt and it just doesn't get any better than that. Um, so, but that may not be a good lane for you if you live over in Northern Florida or Georgia or something. So you got to develop kind of your own lane. Now that takes time. Okay. Um, so how are you going to do it? Well, you could go watch YouTube. You could talk to guys. You could watch my video. But it's actually simpler than that. Once you get your log on to our load board, which is a tool uh, that you need when you start. I don't really use the load board anymore. We're going to get to that in the upcoming things here. But to start off with, what you need to do is you need to take the load board, take your little iPad or phone, 
And in your off time, just pretend you're hauling freight around the country. Say, I'm going to go to Dallas. Well, okay, so we're going to go to Dallas. You always got to think ahead when you're uh, an owner-operator, okay? You don't have someone in the office doing it for you. This is now a hat you have to wear and your responsibility. So you pretend, okay, I'm in Atlanta and I found a load to Dallas. Looks like a good load. But let's look over in Dallas. You're going to pull up Dallas. You're going to see Dallas is not a good area. Uh, and you'll see there's not a lot of loads. And the loads there are usually are real close around Dallas. And anything getting out of Texas is going to be real cheap. You're going to go, well, I better not do that. But there's another load out of Atlanta going to St. Louis. So let's put in St. Louis. Holy moly, look at all the loads in St. Louis and look at what they pay. So you're just going to do this in your off time, okay? Now, yes, the loads are not going to maybe be there when time you pick it up, it, whether you're you're playing this, uh, I don't know what you call it, playing pretend you're trucking or in real life, yes. Uh, yeah, those loads won't be there maybe by the time you get there, but you, by doing this, are going to get a real good idea of what hubs in this country, what areas have freight, especially on our load board and where our agents get freight. Uh, so you're going to learn nothing in California. Man, we're going to get to that in a minute where not to run. That's number two, the do not do's. But just start looking around the country and you can learn real quick if you just spend a couple hours doing this, you know, an hour a day for a few days. And more importantly, when you get out there before you book a load, I can't emphasize this enough we're going to talk about it more is there something coming out of don't do the reloads okay go put in that city in 100 miles 150 200 how far do you got to go to get a load okay um so you're going to start learning where freight is and where freight is not and you're going to build you a lane if you're a home every weekend guy uh, a lane is super important to you um if you are a guy that wants to stay out two or three weeks you can make a longer lane uh, my lane, I stay within about a six to 700 mile circle and never leave it. You may feel comfortable at a 1500 mile radius, just depending on how long you want to be out, when you want to get home, uh, and where you live in the country. So look around on the load board and start learning, put some forethought into, wow, there's lots of loads coming out of here and man, they're going out to Phoenix. I want to go to Phoenix, especially in the winter. It's nice, right? Let me tell you what's in Phoenix. Nothing backhaul garbage is barely going to cover your fuel and if you do what i just told you you will find that out you'll put in phoenix arizona zero loads most of the time maybe one or two junk loads and they may be going to another junk area like colorado which you don't want to go there either we're going to get to that in a minute so spend some time on the load board and learn areas and develop a lane you want to run if you're in Atlanta, you might want to run up to Pittsburgh, to St. Louis, and then back to Atlanta, make you a little loop every week. Um, if you're in Dallas, you got to get out of Dallas. I would suggest you take the shortest hop you can. Short hops pay more in general. And just the shortest hop it takes to get you to a good area, then start running your triangle to work your way back to Dallas or wherever you're at. Lane, number one. Everything else, you can hire the hardest worker in the world. If you're running a terrible lane, you're never gonna, you're not gonna make a lot of money, and uh, you're, it's gonna be real tough on you. I have lost count of the guys I have tried to help over the phone. To the point, I joke about it with Joey. I think I'm gonna start telling them not to run to Detroit or St. Louis or Chicago because then maybe they'll do it. Because when I tell them not to run to the areas we're gonna talk about in a minute. They'll call me up and say they're struggling, and I'm going to ask them, well, where are you at, man? They're in an area I have told them numerous times not to go to. Okay, so you can kind of lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Number one, lanes. You've got to learn a lane, and you've got to stay in a good lane, or you will not be profitable. All right, we'll be back with number two. All right, number two on my list is the single biggest mistake guys make. So number two is do not, I'm a kid, put it in big letters or something. Do not, do not do this. Do not chase that big dollar amount you see on the load board heading west. I almost wish we didn't even book those loads, but there is a reason we're not going to get into that. Um, and once in a while, if you're money ahead and want to take a vacation, fine, whatever. But in general... This is what happens. I know a lot of you guys entering into this program or maybe becoming an owner operator for the first time, you've been company drivers. You see this dollar amount 
and you ain't ever had that kind of money in your life if you consider this big money. And it's almost like candy. You just can't help yourself. You see a load for $8,000 headed to Idaho, Washington State, California, and your little your wheels get to spinning at eight thousand dollars, and I could be there in three days, and all these you start trying to make it make sense, and you go, oh, I got to do this, and then worse yet, and I'm not gonna give my opinion on driver managers. Um, they'll try some will try to talk you into taking it, and you'll maybe call that agent, and they'll say, oh yeah, we get loads out of there all the time, whatever. Do not take that load, okay? And here is why. I can guarantee you, and this happens on a weekly basis. I get guys calling me with this. You're going to go out there and think you're going to get, well, I'll make good enough money. I can go out there and I'll get something cheap coming back. Once you get out there, you're going to find that you're either not going to find a load or the load's not going to load for a couple of days. You're going to sit around and before you know it, you've wasted uh, three or four days getting out there, a weekend screws up the deal. And by the time you get back, you're at two weeks going there and back. Uh, and you could have made way more money, put less miles, less wear and tear on your truck, burnt less fuel and everything just by staying in a good lane. Okay. You would have had to work more loading and unloading. Yes. But do not, and don't let them talk you into that. Remember, you have a driver manager. I know they make you do that when you first start. Fine, whatever. I'm not going to go into that. Um, and agents, they'll try to move loads so they can't move and stuff. Remember, you have the final say. This is your business now. You are the boss. They are not a dispatcher. You can tell them no. You do not work for them. You're working for yourself to make your business successful. So don't let them call you up and you know for what i do now i don't have to but if you're not sure if they run off numbers and you're like i, I don't know say hey let me call you back you know go pull over get out your phone run a calculator look at what's out there is that even worth it to me am i going to make any money do your due diligence before you say yes don't just say yes because you want to make somebody happy or you think you got to make your driver manager happy no you are the boss. You say no or yes. You make these decisions. You have to know when to say no. And I can't emphasize enough. Do not run out there. Don't go to Colorado, Utah, uh, Idaho. I mean, I'm from North Idaho. I'd love to go out there and visit my friends and stuff. And I might do that sometime, but I know I'm going to lose money if I do it. So it's almost cheap for me to just fly over there and visit my friends and to waste driving my truck clear out there. Um, stay out of those bad areas. Go back to the lane. Remember the lane video where you're, see you later, why I'm care leaving, um, where you're playing around looking where freight is in the country. If you do that first step I told you about, you're going to already know, I'm not going to Colorado. I've already looked on the load board. There's nothing there. I'm not going to California. There's nothing but junk, heavy lumber that pays nothing to get back over here. I don't want no part of that. So if you did number one, we shouldn't even have had to talk about number two, but I wanted to emphasize do not get all worked up and overexcited about that big number you see on that load board. That big number is going to get eaten away at, eaten away at, eaten away at, and you would have done far better by staying over in a good lane and running the smaller hops. Number two, don't chase that big money. Calm down, take a deep breath, and look at the big picture. All right, we'll be back with number three. All right, number three. Know your agents and build a good relationship with them in your lane. Once you've got past all this and you've built you a little lane, this step takes time. Um, but I run the same lane all the time. Uh, I never get on the load board, to be honest with you guys. Once in a while, I'll check for wild card loads is what I call them. Uh, to me, they're shingles out of Owens Coring up there in Chicago or over Michigan City, something like that. Those are done through our customer service. I'm not real sure why. Uh, some of the agents put them up, but once in a while, um, I'll look to just see if there's something like that. Uh, but 99% of what I do anymore, is, and I get customer service calling me too, but, um, my phone rings a day or two ahead of time. They know I'm coming. They see me coming And If you do a good job and, um, 
building a relationship. I shouldn't have to tell you how to do this, but uh, let me clear up a couple things on agents. You need to know what our agents are and what they are not. They are not brokers. Okay. If you don't know what a broker is, a load broker on the spot market, he'll get a load out of a shipper and his job is to steal as much of that from you as he can. That's how he makes money. If it pays two, 3000 and he can move it for two, um, he gets a thousand. That is not our agents. Our agents are the exact opposite of that. The more they get you, the more they, they make. They get paid out of that 25 or 30%, whatever it is, that you give up. I believe they get 7% of that. But the bottom line is, the more they get you, the more they make. So you don't need to negotiate with these guys. They're getting you every penny they can. And if you compare what they're pushing that load for, sometimes you'll be able to find that same load on big shippers like Owen Corning or something on the spark market. And you can see, oh, look at this. Our agent's got the all in of 2,500 and this joker broker, he's trying to move it for 1,500 because he's trying to steal as much as he can. So you need to know our agents are on your side. Okay. They're working hard uh, to help you. And that's how they get paid. So be nice to them. Be kind. Be a good human being. They're a part of the team. They are not your enemy. They are your friend. And uh, I have only met one of our agents. I work with four or five all the time. I met one in Talladega. So I'm not personal friends with them. Uh, but I do a good job. And all an agent wants is you to do what you say you're going to do. That's it. You're going to pick it up. And you're going to deliver it. That's it. Don't go get lost. Don't take a vacation. Don't stop at some girl's house for two days. Just pick the load up, deliver the load, and be courteous on the phone. And you will be on their A-list, and they will be blowing your phone up all the time. Okay? That's, after you've been here a while, that's the level you want to get to, in my opinion. I run the same lane. Almost never get on the load board. Agents call me all the time. And I get good loads uh, the way it works. And some may think this is fair. Some may not. But this is just the system we have. Uh, an agent may get four or five loads. And she's got three trucks she knows coming in the area. She's going to call those three trucks and say, hey, do you want any of these? And uh, they say yes. They'll take whatever, whatever. And whatever's less, then she'll put it on the load board for any truck she doesn't see coming. Or somebody who's maybe willing to deadhead a long ways to get it. So, long story short, the good loads go long before they ever hit the load board, okay? So, the load board is a tool, especially when you get going. You will not want to live and die by that load board. You're going to live and die and make money by the agents. So, I'm not going to name off my agents, but if you watch my money and news videos, you'll see where I run. Um, I work with three, four main agents. If I dip down into the southern part, there's a couple more if I get down into Alabama, um, there's a couple other agents I work with, but mostly I work with four main agents. And uh, yeah, that's where I get my loads. They call me or, and we're going to get to that at the last one, how to book your loads. Or I call them, tell them I'm coming or remind them I'm coming and tell them what I'm looking for. But we'll get that in a minute. So relationship with your L agents is a huge, huge thing. It's not hard. It's not kissing up. It's just being a professional, being courteous and kind on the phone and doing what you say you're going to do. That will take you a long, long ways at CRST. All right, we'll be back in a minute with number four, which is a short and simple one. See you in a minute. Number four. Okay. You got to, this is your business. You're going to reap what you sow. Uh, so you got to hustle and have a good work ethic. I feel comfortable in saying, if you fail, it's your fault. Uh, either you don't understand how to build a lane, you're just not good at business, you're not personable with agents, whatever. And don't get me wrong, that doesn't make you a bad person, okay? Not everybody is meant to be an owner-operator. In fact, the numbers are staggering. Only two out of ten make it past two years, okay? So, not everybody can do this. So some guys just don't have the business mindset don't make you a bad person you're just meant to be a company driver you can't wear all the hats and it's a lot man it is a lot i am constantly working do i make twice as much as a company driver absolutely probably three actually three times as much but i guarantee you i work two to three times more okay 
I'm constantly working office paperwork, truck maintenance scheduling, doing a lot of myself. Um, this is a big, big step you've decided to take. So just know it's going to take hustle and work ethic. If you watch my weekly video, I am running. Now, I go home every weekend. I certainly couldn't keep this pace, nor would I want to keep this pace if I was going to stay out for a week or so. Of course, you'd have your 34 hours off. So, yeah, I probably would, uh, I guess. Um, but I'm hustling, man. Uh, uh, I just, I come, I'm a Gen Xer, man. I got a ton of drive, and I don't know nothing different to hard work. I max out my 14-hour day every day. I take 10, and I go. That's pretty much my day, Monday to Friday. And it keeps me very, very profitable. But you have to have that work ethic and go get them attitude. If you laze around and, and don't work hard, you will fail. Okay, that's just how it's going to work. If this was easy, everybody would do it. Everybody would be an owner operator. Uh, so they didn't have to put up with company stuff so they could make the big bucks. But the big bucks come from hard, hard work. In fact, to be honest with you, I don't see how these big companies, CRST included, can even afford these, the drivers because, to be honest with you, the work ethic in a lot of ways is gone. Um, you know, I've talked to the upper people and a lot of guys, your majority driver out there now, man, he's a three to 400 mile a day guy and that's about it. And, uh, doesn't want to load every day. It's just bottom line lazy. And, you know, I, I wish I could make a ton of money and, and, and watch movies all day long at the truck stop, but, uh, we're just not there yet. So if you want to make money, you got to hustle and you got to work, work ethic is number four. Remember, that is a big key in this deal. Work hard, and you will make it. I'll be back in just a second with the last tip I got for you. All right, let's wrap it up. Number five, how and when to book loads so you don't burn an agent by being late, missing a pickup, missing a delivery, or worse yet, the worst one of all, having to cancel the load. And worse than that, canceling at the last second. So, yes, you know, trucks can break down, things happen, agents are fine with that. But my suggestion to you is never commit to nothing unless you're 100% sure and err on the side of caution. So, in my little world, I never book more than my next load ahead. I don't go two loads, okay? I just don't like to do that. There's too many variables uh, things can change and other better loads can come up too. So don't be too aggressive with your booking. Um, if you're looking two days out, there's not going to be as many loads, uh, for that area as there will be one day out or the day of sometimes, sometimes it's best to wait till the day of, but when someone says, if I'm delivering in the morning, let's say, oh, okay, I know I'm going to be there at seven, eight in the morning. But what I don't know a lot of times, most of the places I've been to, but in the beginning you won't, you won't know, are they fast at unloading trucks? Are they slow? Is it a circus? Is there one truck ahead of me or 10? So if I, just an example I'd give you, if I'm going to unload at 8 a.m., I would never schedule my next pickup till at least noon. And that's if it's 40, 50 miles away. I'd rather get there early and hope they'll load me early or take a couple hours off, shift my 14 on my split log and, and continue on about my day later. But I don't, you don't want to be late because in this world, if you don't know, it's kind of funny. You could be an hour early. They don't care. But if you're one minute late, oh, well, you're going to have to reschedule now. That's just the world of trucking. That's just, it's dumb, uh, but it is what it is. So I wouldn't get too aggressive on your booking too far out. Uh, I would stay no more than a day out or so and give yourself a big window on, uh, uh, getting to your next one. You know, better to be, give yourself two hours than to be an hour late. Trust me on that. And then, uh, other than that, communication is key. If things start going wrong, let the agent know and be willing to say, you know what? I, I'm not a hundred percent sure I can get that today. Let's just go ahead and throw it back up for someone else to grab and if no one else grabs it and I can get there, great, that's fine. But what you do not want to do is if you're at a place and they're unloading in the morning and things are going miserably, the overhead crane broke down, there's trucks lined up around the block. I mean, this doesn't happen a lot, but it can happen. You know, oh man, I'm going to be four or five hours. This place closes at two. 
You don't want to wait till 1.30 to call the agent and say, sorry, I can't make it. No, you need to be in contact with them immediately in the morning. Say, hey, I'm held up. And they got a crane broke. I just want to let you know that agent's probably going to say, okay, give me a call in a couple hours and see if there's been improvements. And then you're going to get to a certain point where you and the agent are going to have to make a decision to try and reschedule the load, to load the next day, uh, put it back out for someone else to grab, see if there's another truck. There's all these variables. Communication is key. And if you don't do that and uh, you burn agents, you're going to seal your own fate. I mean, it's not a matter of favoritism or buddy-buddy. No, it's just a matter of professional. If you are professional with these agents and do your job and communicate, they will. They really like that, and you will be rewarded if you want to use that word. It's a... Uh, this used to be common knowledge, but apparently it's not so common anymore. And I don't know why a lot of guys think they don't have to do this, but you really need to be in contact with your agents and keep them up to date of what's going on. And don't hang them out to dry because put yourself in their shoes. Then they got to call that customer and say, my driver canceled at the last minute. That puts a bad taste in the shipper's mouth. Makes it worse when she, he or she goes to get more loads. It's just a domino effect. It hurts everybody from you to the next guy, to her, to, to everything. Don't do it. All right, guys. This video has probably turned into 20, 25 minutes. I thought I was going to be able to do it in 10, but I wanted to be thorough. So hopefully this will help somebody. Uh, you, I do trucking stuff on this channel. That's pretty much all I do. Uh, so if you like that kind of stuff, like and subscribe. If not, no hard feelings. God bless you and the best of luck to each and every one of you. Bye now.